What's up guys, Teres Kozin here. Welcome back to another code review video. In this one, I'm super excited. We're going to learn a lot of different things and we're going to refactor code like a senior React developer. All right, cool, let's begin. The app that we're looking at today is called Taskmaster and this was actually submitted to me on the Discord by one of our Discord members. If you want your own app to also be reviewed on the channel in exchange for a video, feel free to send it on a Discord and I'll be more than happy to take a look at it. Taskmaster is an app that allows you to store notes, tasks and schedules all in one place. It's essentially an easy way to find what you need whenever and most importantly, it's completely for free, which means that if you're curious, if if you want to check out this application, you can go, you can sign up, make an account and use it yourself. It's built by one of our Discord members. This is what the code looks like. It's built using Next.js and here you have your typical Next.js folder architecture. You have app because it's using the new app directory. You have components, hooks, middleware, public, and then you have a utils folder, which I really love to see in any project. So let's begin by looking at the code of one of these pages. So I'll go here, I'll open up this app directory and then we'll pick the projects, for example, and we'll go here to page.tsx. This is a very, very big page. As I was looking at this when I was doing my review, I notice that this component, if I can just scroll down here to the bottom, bear with me, has 641 lines of code. That is insane for a React component. This component, just by the number of lines, immediately tells me that this is too big and that there's some stuff that we can do here to refactor it. But before we get to refactoring, I noticed something directly on literally the first line of this component that is clearly wrong. And it's this line right here, line 16. You have const user, comma set user equals get user with a capital G. Now this was very confusing to me when I first saw this because I wasn't exactly sure what this get user was. Was it a function? Was it a hook? Was it a component? Because usually in React, only components have their first letter capitalized. So then naturally I went to the definition of get user and then I immediately realized that this was a custom hook. So we have here a piece of state called value and then set value that is of type user. So this basically holds the user. And then we have this use effect here that is responsible for fetching the user and then setting it in a state. And then finally here at the bottom, we are returning value and set value. And then we're doing this typecasting here, which is a little bit interesting. So at first, what I try to do is I try to just remove this type casting to see what happens, right? Because the types are already correct in this value here. So there's no apparent reason to have them typecasted as something else, especially as unknown, which directly removes the types. And then I went back to the page and I immediately saw that we have a bunch of errors. If you can see here at the right, we have a bunch of errors. And if I can just find one error, for example, here, user question mark dot projects, we see here that property projects does not exist on type. And let me just get at the prettified error because I have this extension that makes it easier. User or dispatch, right? Projects does not exist on type user or dispatch set state action user or undefined. So what's going on? Well, if I go back here to the top of the component and I hover over set user, the type of set user is user or dispatch set action user or undefined or undefined. So something here went wrong with the types. And I'm assuming that it's because of this array here, the way that we've defined this array and then we return this, maybe the types get lost. I wasn't able to really figure this out but I was able to find a solution for this that is better than using the unknown. So essentially what you want to do is you also want to type this. So we'll do as, and then we're just going to let copilot here do this thing. And then instead of just user, I'm just going to add here undefined. And then I'm going to add the same thing here as well, undefined. Because if you look here at our piece of state, value is of type user or undefined. Yes, we are defining it here as user, but initially this starts off as undefined. And this is automatically inferred by TypeScript. If you do it this way and then you save and then you go back to page, you're going to see that now this set user also is blue. So it's properly highlighted in VS Code, which is a sign of a good thing. And then if you hover over it, it's dispatch user or undefined. And then we no longer have any errors here at all. If we go back to find what we had user question mark dot projects, we have the projects properly typed, right? So this is the first thing that I saw that could be refactored in this custom hook. And then the second thing, which is arguably more important than the first, because that's the thing that initially got me to look at this file, the name of this hook is wrong. 
In React, by convention, custom hooks always start with use. So instead of get user, this should be here. Let me just remove this. Use get user, right? This is not the correct naming for a custom hook, which means that we also need to change the name of this file here. So I'll come here and I'll rename this as well. Make the same change, remove the G and then do use get user. Press enter, automatically update the imports as well. And then we go back to our page. We scroll up here at the top. And then we rename this from get user to use get user. And then over here as well, we rename this as well, use get user. And now everything is more clear. The moment you look at this, you immediately know that this is a custom hook and you don't get confused thinking that it's a component because the first letter is capitalized. And then finally, and this is a minor thing, notice here that we have user and then set user, but inside of the actual hook, we have value and set value. This is a little bit confusing. And what I would do is I would just replace all values with user. So I'll come here and I'll do user. And then this makes it just a little bit easier easier because you have user everywhere. This is indeed the state of the user. And also here you're returning user and set user, which matches what you get here. So it's a lot harder to get confused. And this is a minor thing, but it makes a lot of difference. Cool. So now let's look at something else. And this is something that I noticed as I was working within this get user custom hook file. It's essentially this error toast right here. If we go here and press go to definition of error toast, you're going to see that this is in its own custom file called utils. And this is in the utils folder of this component, which I really, really like, and I believe that every single React application should always have a utils folder for exactly things like these. Now, what I like about this is that this is using the toast from the React Toastify library, which is a third party library, but this is cool because it's in its own file. It exports these custom functions, which means that you can call these functions, you can set toasts no matter where you are in the application. You don't have to be in a component, you can do this from another function, and this presumably will work as expected. It's a really cool way to be able to send notifications, send some piece of state to your application using this third party library from anywhere in your component. So I really, really like the fact that there's a separate file for this with these exported functions. But at the same time, I want you to notice the similarities between error toast and then success toast right here. You're going to notice that a lot of the things are similar. We're making the same if check right here. We're also passing a lot of the same properties. So this to me indicates that there's no real need to have two separate functions and this may better be represented by just one function that is configurable to either send an error or also send a success toast. So let's build it. Let's actually build that function. I'm going to come here and I'm going to make a new line and I'm going to do export const show toast because this is no longer going to be an error or a success toast. It's going to be an arbitrary toast that you can configure. I'm going to make this equal and then do parentheses and then I'm just going to do text and then I'm going to do here string close the parenthesis and then just do this and for now leave it just like this then what i want to do because this function now doesn't know if you want to send an error or a success toast i'm going to create here a new type i'm going to do type toast type and that is going to be equal to either error or it's going to be equal to success all right and then this is going to go as a second parameter here we're going to do type and that is going to be of type toast that way we can now use this type in our function to define whether we run this function or whether we run this toast.success function. So then what I'm going to do, I'm going to come here, I'm going to make a new line and I'm going to do const toast fn equals and I'm going to let Copilot be super helpful and complete the thing for me. So essentially, this toast function is either going to be equal to error toast. Actually, this is wrong. This should be toast.error. Sometimes Copilot is wrong and I like to show it raw in my videos without really scripting it just so that you can see how I work with it because I think that it's really, really useful. And then here, instead of success toast, we'll do toast.success, right? So basically, this toast function will first check the type of the error. If it's of type error, it's going to return this function right here, toast.error. Otherwise, it's going to be toast.success, which means that we can come here to the next line and we can do toast fn and then we can pass it here the text and for now we're not going to pass any optional configurations then what i want to do is i want to take a look at these options here and see exactly what i could do to make them reusable so if i look here position top right is the same for the error and also for the success case auto close is almost the same we have the same default value here but in the case of the error we can optionally overwrite this by passing a time parameter here so we'll have to handle that when we create our reusable options and then the rest of the options are pretty much 
much the same, so we can just reuse them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these options right here. So select all of these here, copy them, come in here to our show toast function, make here a new line and then do const toast options that is going to be equal to an object, make a new line and then paste all of these options right there. And then here we don't actually have the time. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to remove the time for now for just a second. And then we are going to come here to our toast function, put a comma, create an empty object. And this is important, make a new line and then do dot 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 toast options. We're essentially going to spread these toast options in our toast function. Now, you'll notice that here, if I hover, we have an error, which is basically argument of type. All of this is not assignable to toast options. So what we need to do is we actually need to give a type to these toast options and we can do like this. We can come here and do toast options and import this directly from React Toastify. If we save this, now we no longer have any errors. And then what I want to do to handle this case here where we want to potentially overwrite the auto close and even better, let's make all of these options overwritable. Instead of passing time here as a parameter, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come here and do a little bit of TypeScript magic. So I'm going to make a comma and I'm going to do options and then question mark because this is going to be an optional parameter and then colon and this is going to be equal to partial this comes directly from TypeScript and I'm going to give it toast options and then close this bracket right here. Essentially, what we've done is we've created an optional options parameter, which can be of type partial toast options. Partial, if you just hover over this, this comes directly from TypeScript, so you have access to this right off the way. It makes all of the properties in T optional. And T, in this case, is our toast options, which means that you can pass here even an empty object or any object that has some of the properties of toast options, which means that we can then come here to the bottom where we have our toast function and right below toast options, we can do dot, 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 and then options. If I can tap. What this will do is essentially we give it our default toast options here. And then we also pass it this options right below. And because we're spreading this object, every property that is in toast options is going to get overridden by everything that is matching in options. So now with this, we have one function, it handles both the error and the success case. And we can also add easily any other case. And then based off of these, we'll render here the correct function to call. And then these options here are passed in a way that they're completely overridable by any options using this optional option parameter here. This is a much better way than having two different options. Cool, that was great, but there's still more work to do. Let's actually now look at a bigger component and do some senior level React refactoring. I'm going to come here on the site, open up this file explorer, and then I'm going to go into components, and then here we have profile settings. This is the component that supposedly runs the profile settings, so everything related to the profile settings. But as I was looking over this component when I was doing my review, the first thing immediately screamed at me, red flag. And it's these four lines of code right here. We have these four different forms. We have auth form, we have password form, we have username form and email form, which to me indicates without even having to look at the rest of the component that this profile settings has four forms that do four different things. And most probably will have four different submit handlers for each of those functions. And of course, as I was scrolling down, I immediately saw them. I saw submit username, which does a bunch of stuff with form data and then actually does the submit call right here. Then we can scroll down a bit more. We have submit a new password. Again, same thing just for the different password. Scroll down even more, submit email, scroll down even more, submit auth. And we have four different forms with four submit functions all in this one component, which you should never do in React because as you probably hopefully know by now, I like to follow in React the thing that is called the single responsibility principle, which means that every single component that you build in React should ideally do one thing and one thing only. So in the case of this profile settings component, it should not handle the auth form, the password form, the username form, and the email form altogether. Instead, what it should do, its only responsibility is to create the placeholder for those forms, which would be in their own individual components, and then put them all together and maybe do some styling, maybe do some modal things, something that is global to all forms. But it should not render individually each form, and even worse, handle the functions for all of that form. So what you want to do is you want to 
create one component for each of these forms and put everything that is related to that form in that component and then have this profile settings only be responsible for rendering all of these different forms and then delegated everything else to those individual components. And we're actually going to do this, but we're just going to do this with one form because you'll get the idea and then you can go ahead and do for all the other forms. The one we're going to do in this video is the username form. So first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this username form here and just see where else it's being used in this component. So I'll go to the next occurrence and immediately we have here the JSX for this form. So we have paragraph here, username, and then we have the form that actually renders the form of the username. That's fine. Let's now go to the next occurrence and the next occurrence is inside of the submit username function. That's great. That's fine. Let's check if there's an other occurrence. Let's go here and no, there isn't. It's just these three occurrences, the ref here, the JSX, and then the function. So then what we can do is we can come here to the left and we can create a new component. So I'll come here, do new file, and then we're going to do profile settings username.tsx. And then we're going to create our new component. So we'll do RJSFC and then do profile settings. And that was username. And then we're just going to give it a diff, an empty diff for now, because we're not going to put anything yet. Now already, just by having this here, let me just close this, just by creating this component and giving it this name, profile settings username, it's immediately obvious what this component should do. This component should be responsible for the username part of the profile settings, nothing else, not the auth, not the email, not the password, just the username part of the profile settings. Then what I'm going to do, I'm going to come here and then remove this use username from here and put it in our new component. I'm going to make a new line here and then import user from React so that now everything works as we expect. Then I'm going to go back to profile settings and I'm going to scroll down here at the bottom where we have the JSX for our username form. And I'm going to take this entire thing here and then just cut it out from here and immediately replace it with profile username, profile settings, username, and then make a new line just so it's easier for us to see. And then I'm going to come here to our actual form and then paste the JSX that we copied and then save. Essentially, what we've done is we've replaced all of the JSX with this component, which as you can see, it reduced slightly the size of our profile settings. If you do this for every single form, this profile settings component will end up becoming really, really small, which is exactly what you want. Then coming back to our settings username, we have here some undefined things. We have our submit function, submit username that is undefined. So what we have to do is we have to come back here where we defined our submit username function, and then we just have to copy it, remove it from here completely. So I'll select all the function, come over here to the bottom. This is by the way, a big function and something could be said about the size of that function, but that's neither here nor there. Come back here and then paste this submit function right here and then import whatever it is that we're missing. For example, form event, we can import this from React. We have username schema here, which I think there's an import. Yes, there is from util slash zod, very good to see. And then we're going to import this error toast here, which by the way, right after this, we're going to replace this with our new show toast that we created. And I think there's one more import. Yes, it is the toast here. We want to import toast from React Toastify. And that's it. With this, we now have a profile settings username component, which is only responsible for handling the username of the profile settings. It creates its own ref for the form. It creates its own function to submit the form to actually send the request to the backend. And then it renders its own JSX for rendering the actual form. Great. Now we have one more change to make, and it's to replace this error toast with the new show toast that we just created. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new line here and do show toast. I'm going to import this directly from YouTube slash toast, come here, make a parenthesis, and then directly give it this error right here. Just take this, put it here. And then because now show toast needs to know if it has to show an error or success message, we also need to give this error. And again, TypeScript knows exactly what, and then we can just remove this. And we don't need to pass any configuration options because we didn't have any when we called error toast. So with this, we've just replaced this. And now we no longer need error toast. And we've used our new function that accounts for both errors and the success case and that is a better result. All right, guys, that's another code review video done and in the books. I really hope that you've enjoyed this video and I also hope that you've learned something. And for you, Jesse, that's the developer that submitted this in, I really hope that you've learned something and that you got value from watching this video. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a PR for this for all of the changes that I've done and I'm going to submit it to your repository so that you can merge it and hopefully make your application a little bit better.
If you enjoyed the video, as always, you can click here to subscribe. You can also click here to watch a different video of mine, which I'm sure that is super, super awesome. And with that being said, my name has been Darius Cousin. This is Cousin Solutions. Thank you so much for watching once again, and I will see you all in the next video. Ciao, ciao.